from Seoul National University, and I'm happy to give a talk for this LLVM developer meeting. Today, I'm going to talk about an important topic in LLVM, which is undef and poison values. Let me briefly introduce what this talk is about. LLVM has two special values, undef and poison, which are introduced in the past to enable important compiler optimizations. It has been a great success, and now we can see optimizations that use undef and poison everywhere in LLVM. But ironically, they increasingly became the source of miscompilations as well. The main reason was that the specification of undef and poison in language reference weren't described in detail, and existing LLVM optimizations sometimes did not respect the specification. This led to real-world miscompilations that were hard to trace down. For example, Three years ago, bootstrapping LLVM failed because LLVM miscompiled itself. To summarize what happened, the semantics of branching on undev has been unclear, causing a series of optimizations on branches to transform incorrectly. The author of this thread left this impressive statement, which is that every transformation of seems of no problem, but the composition results is wrong. It is not still clear which transformation to blame. Recently, thanks to the efforts from many people, the situation has been improved. The semantics of operations with respect to undef and poison became more explicit, and optimizations are being updated to follow the language reference. In this talk, I'd like to introduce the efforts that are made by many people. I will first present the background of important concepts, the recent efforts, and the future roadmap for correct and good optimizations. I hope that after this talk, all of you also become experts in undef and poison. Part 1. Let me explain what undefined behavior, undef value, and poison value are. I guess many compiler developers have already heard about a notion of undefined behavior. Undefined behavior is the behavior of a program that violates the language standard. It is allowed for a compiler to simply ignore the case when source has undefined behavior, and this is called behavioral refinement. Let me show you an example of undefined behavior in C. An optimizing compiler can compile the program on the left into the assembly on the right. You can see that there is no load of value x as well as branch on cond in the assembly, which is beneficial in terms of code size and performance. Let me give you the precise reasoning of the correctness of this compilation. In the first sentence, x is uninitialized, causing it to contain a conceptual value that is called indeterminate value in C. When cond is false, x is not updated, so the indeterminate value is read. But According to C standard, it is undefined behavior if the value of an object with automatic storage duration is used while it is indeterminate. So, if cond is false, the program raises undefined behavior. Therefore, compiler can assume that cond is always true, leading to emitting constant 3 only, which is nice. But Long time ago, LLVM could not do this optimization, and the reason was that it did not have a value in IR that is uninitialized. This was an important blocker because many optimizations are done in IR programs. As you know, IR is a language that is tailored for compiler optimizations. Especially, it uses SSA form, which allows easier writing of optimizations. This example shows the, how the SSA construction is done by mem reads from the initial C program. The fee node is inserted after the if block. When cond is true, the fee becomes 3, which is its first operand. But when cond is false, what should be the value? The answer was a new value undef. When cond was false, we can say that x simply is undef. Then, the following optimizations, such as inst combine, can fold the fee on 3 and undef into simply 3, finishing the optimization that we've seen from the previous slide. After undef was successfully introduced into LLVM, many optimizations on undef have been added, helping code generation of efficient assembly. Then, 
You may wonder whether undef is equivalent to the indeterminate value which was introduced in the first slide. Conceptually, they are similar, both represent the uninitialized value. However, there is an important difference between indeterminate value and undef. Let's look at this example which lowers a C program on the left into I on the right. The struct variable A has two bit fields, X and Y, which are two and six bits respectively. To write one two bit field X, the IR loads one byte, masks away the two bits, mark bit one, and store the whole bytes back. If A has indeterminate value stored, then loading A, A immediately raises undefined behavior as described before. This is not what we want because we want to appropriately remove undefined bits and store a value using logical operation. This implies that undef and indeterminate value should be different. <clears throat> With the current undef, we can explain this tr transformation. To be precise, let me explain what precisely undef is first. Undef is the full set of all defined values. For example, undef of i8 is a set of integers from 0 to 255. Note that we have partially undefined value as well. A partially undefined value is simply a subset of undef. From now on, when I say undefined values, it includes fully undefined as well as partially undefined values. Then, an operation on undefined values is done in element-wise manner, returning another set of values or a defined value when the result is a singleton set. Note that this formal definition did not exist in the original proposal document. This definition came after discussions between many developers and researchers to explain undef related optimizations. To show that this works, let's rerun this example using this definition of undef. Now, B is undef, a set of all possible 8 bit integers. The stars here represent uninitialized bits. Then, this end operation performs element wise operation on the undef value. It returns a partially undefined value, which is a set of 8-bit integers with two lowest bits set to zero. Then the OR operation returns a set of integers with lowest bits set to zero one. There was no undefined behavior and we could successfully preserve the undefinedness of remaining six bits, which is very nice. Now we understand, understood what undef is, but after then another problem emerged. LLVM wanted to support another operation that is undefined behavior in C, which is signed integer overflow. The problem, however, was that undef wasn't enough to explain it. Before jumping into the solution, let me describe why making signed integer overflow raise undefined behavior is important. Signed integer overflow is useful for several op optimizations, including induction variable widening. This optimization widens the bit width of an induction variable from 30 to 64, which is the size of a pointer. The benefit of it, this optimization comes from removing a hidden signed extension at pointer arithmetics. On the left, i has to be extended for every iteration because the pointer is 64 bits, but the index is 32 bits signed integer. On the right, the extension isn't needed, so it is cheaper. But we cannot naively widen i because there is a corner case that makes this transformation wrong. If y is int 32 max, i on the left cannot be larger than y because it is 32 bits integer. However, after widening, the comparison can be false because i is 64 bits integer. In order to exclude this corner case, LLVM exploits the fact that i plus 1 should not sign overflow in C. LLVM introduced a new flag, NSW, to the add instruction. The NS flag imposes the assumption that signed overflow never happens in this operation. And then here is the final question. What should the result of signed overflow? We can think of two options. The first is to define it as undef. However, it turns out that it's too weak because all elements of undef is never larger than int 32 max. This will make the loop condition i less than or equal to y still true. The second is to define it as undefined behavior. It makes this transformation sound, but it blocks other usable, useful optimizations such as hoisting addition with NSW out of a loop because it may introduce undefined behavior when the loop is not executed. So it was the motivation for introducing a new value poison into LLVM. 
If poison is a special value that represents violation of an assumption such as no sign overflow, if you are familiar with floating points, then poison is similar to the non value. Operations such as add or comparison simply propagate poison, and operations like division raises undefined behavior when it is used as its divisor. It is unlike undef, operation of which is done in element wise manner. Whenever poison is used, you can replace poison by any value. Let me explain this example again by starting with i being in 32 max. On the left, i plus 1 overflowed 32 bits representation, so the result is poison. On the right, i plus 1 did not overflow, so the, re the result is, isn't poison. Since poison propagates through comparison, the comparison between i and y again becomes poison. This is unlike undef. If i was undef, the comparison would have always returned true. The comparison on the right is false as before. By the property, now it is allowed to replace poison with false. Therefore, the optimization finally became correct, which is nice. This is the end of backgrounds about undef and poison. I hope the explanations were clear to everyone. For further understanding of undef and poison, let me compare undef and poison values by introducing one common property and three different properties. First, both poison and undef can be replaced with different value at each use. Let's assume that y is a load of an uninitialized variable, which is undef. Since two undefs are not correlated, it is okay to fold this into different values, such as 0 and 1. Similarly for poison. Z is poison due to signed overflow, and two users of Z can see different values. These transformations are a bit counterintuitive, but it is helpful for doing more optimization because each use can pick a value that fits more. The second one is an important difference between undef and poison. Unlike poison, undefined values do not admit a few arithmetic properties. To explain this, Let's see this transformation, which simply converts x times 2 into x plus x. If x was well defined, then this is trivially sound. If x was poison, then this is still fine, because y is poison in both source and target. However, if x was undef, then the multiplication in source is done pairwise, causing y to be a set of even numbers. But after optimization, the addition is done pairwise between two full set integers, causing y to be a full set of numbers again. Therefore, this optimization is incorrect when x is undef. Another difference between poison and undef is that poison is more undefined than undef. This means that it is allowed to replace poison with undef. It explains exa replacing, for example, Add undef with undef when the other operand is poison. The inverse direction replacing undef with, po with poison is disallowed. This means that undef cannot be replaced with another value in general. For example, select transformation is incorrect because when c is true and y is poison, undef is replaced with poison. Due to this unsoundness, the select transformation was recently removed. I will revisit this example later in this talk. The final difference between poison and undef is that poison cannot be used for encoding uninitialized bits. To see this, let's revisit this example lowering from C program to IR and suppose that uninitialized bits are set to poison. In this program, only the two bits corresponding to a.x should be initialized to 0, 1. Here, the value b loaded from uninitialized bits is poison. The end operation on b returns poison because logical operations propagate poison. Similarly, the or operation also propagates poison. Finally, poison is written to a, a instead of 1, which makes this transformation unsound. Therefore, we cannot use poison to encode uninitialized bits. So, this is all about undefined behavior, undef and poison. To summarize, both poison and undef are values, and using these values do not immediately raise undefined behavior. This diagram shows that undef is more defined than poison. As you have seen, there are important differences between undef and poison values.
Now I'm going to start the part two, the recent progresses in fixing problems in NetLBM IR that are related with undefined behavior. The first progress in NetLBM that I'd like to introduce is that several operations semantics are now clarified at LBM language reference document. There were a few operations whose semantics with respect to undef and poison were not explicitly defined. Missing definitions were potential sources of miscompilations, and some of them led to miscompilations in practice. First, a conditional branch on undef is now undefined behavior. This explains optimizations that rely on branch conditions such as correlated value propagation. This clarification, however, implies that introducing a new condition branch may silently introduce undefined behavior because its condition may be undef. Such transformations were already detected by memory sanitizer in the past. They couldn't be properly fixed, however. Instead, when memory sanitizer was enabled, the optimizations were simply disabled. This optimization can be fixed with freeze, which will be described later. Second, it is now explicitly stated that giving poison to the condition of select returns poison. This explains optimizations that convert select into arithmetic operations if cheaper. Many clarifications on other operations were made in language reference as well. You can visit the links below if you are interested in the details. The second progress is that many bugs related to undef and poison are discovered by a translation validation tool called Alive2 where the clarifications in the language reference are formalized. This is the first time that existing optimizations are systematically validated with respect to the precise semantics of undef and poison. A lab 2 takes two bit codes and checks whether the first one is correctly translated to the second one using an SMT server. For the online version, you can visit this website and have fun. I'm also actively involved in the project. Alive2 detected many failures from existing unit tests that are under test slash transforms directory. 23 bugs are reported and 17 of those are already fixed. There are still 37 unit test failures unreported because either its fix is non-trivial or it isn't likely to cause end-to-end -end miscompilation in practice. To see the full list of failures, you can visit this webpage. It contains a nice graph that shows the number of failures per day. The third progress is that a freeze instruction is officially added to LLBM 10.0 to deal with the no miscompilation box. Using freeze, you can remove undefinedness from a value which can make problematic optimizations correct again. Let me explain the definition of freeze in detail first. A freeze instruction takes one operand and returns a value. If the operand is poison or undefined, it non-deterministically picks one of defined values and returns it. Otherwise, it's just an identity operation. When lowered into assembly, it is always an identity operation, so it has no runtime cost. To see the effect of freeze, let's revisit the previous example, transforming x times 2 to x, x plus x. Note that LLVM does not actually perform this transformation. I'm just using it as an example. I'd like to remind you that this transformation is incorrect because when x is undef, y in source is a set of even numbers, whereas y in target becomes fully undef. To make this transformation correct, we can freeze x. To see why, let's assume that x is undef again. In target, since x is undefined, freeze returns one of well defined integers. Since the value of x prime is set to one single integer, all users of x prime now sees the same value. Since y is the addition of two same numbers, y is an even number. The value of y in target is an element of the y in source, so the transformation is finally correct. So this is how freeze works. After its introduction, freeze was used to fix a few miscompilations in LLVM. The first one is converting select CXY on the left to the conditional branch on the right. The reason why this is incorrect is when C is poison, select in the source just returns poison, whereas the conditional branch in the target raises undefined behavior. There are a few passes that perform this transformation, such as code gem prepare and jump threading. In order to make them correct, the branch condition was frozen. 
When C is poison, phrase C is either true or false. Therefore, the branch is either taken or not taken, but does not raise undefined behavior anymore. The second one is different pairs optimization in LLVM. This optimization converts the remainder into a multiply followed by subtraction. This transformation is beneficial if the architecture has expensive remainder operation. This transformation seems fine, but it is incorrect if undef is given as an input. So let's assume that x is undef and y is 1. a is undef in both source and targets, and in source, b is 0 because undef remainder 1 is computed element-wise, which is always 0. However, in target, a times y is undef, so b becomes undef minus undef, which is again undef. Since 0 cannot be replaced with undef, this transformation turns out to be incorrect in general. But we don't want to remove this optimization since it's beneficial in certain circumstances. Fortunately, freeze can make this optimization correct. I will show you how. The problematic case was when x was undef and y was 1. On the right, you can see that the frozen x is used instead. Since it's frozen, x prime has one defined value, say n. Then everything is starting to work as this optimization expected. A is simply n as well. A times y is simply n because y is 1. So b is n minus n, which is simply 0. The value of b is both 0 in source and target, so the optimization is correct. In the full patch, y needed to be frozen as well due to the similar problem. The patch has landed and different pairs is now working correctly. As you have seen from these two examples, freeze can be used to exclude problematic corner cases. As you can see from the previous slides, quite a few bugs are fixed with freeze. However, we could not immediately apply the fixes of remaining miscompilations using freeze. It is due to potential performance regression since there are optimizations and analysis that aren't aware of freeze. Indeed, there was slowdown when DBRAM pairs was initially fixed with freeze as shown before. DBRAM pairs is almost at the end of O3 pipeline, but if LTO is enabled, the freeze could affect a series of optimizations. It caused about 2% slowdown in NCFR, and the reason was that the inserted freeze blocked scalar evolution, causing loop strength to reduce to be disabled. In order to re resolve the issue, a new pass that hoists freeze out of a loop as was added. The slowdown problem was resolved after the pass was added and enabled. Due to the performance regression concerns, a few incorrect optimizations were simply removed rather than fixed with freeze. And here is an example, which pulls a select with undef and y into just y. This transformation is incorrect as we have already seen before. Although one can easily fix this optimization by freezing y, it was instead removed due to performance regression concerns with freeze. But I still wanted to make people use freeze, and many patches for freeze have landed so far. The patches can be categorized into two. The first one is to add analysis checking whether a value is always defined, which can help optimizations insert fewer freezes. For example, I added the function is guaranteed not to be undef or poison to LLVM. It checks whether the given value is never undef or poison. Also, several library functions such as printf now have no undef attribute attached to their arguments and return values, which assumes that those values cannot be undef or poison. The second category is to make optimizations and value analysis aware of freeze. Now, several optimizations such as GB and LICM know how to optimize in the presence of freeze. Also, the analysis computes known bits and is known zero understands freeze instruction as well. So far, I talked about the recent progress in LLVM. The semantics of language became clearer, many bugs are found, and miscompletions are fixed, and patches to address possible slowdowns are landed. However, the performance regression concern has not been fully resolved. In the part three, I'm going to talk about future directions to resolve such concerns. 
The first direction is to use assumptions from the source language that certain values cannot be undefined poison, which will be helpful to reduce the number of phrases to be added as I just discussed. The class of such assumptions is that function arguments must be well-defined in C and C++. In other words, passing ill-defined values such as indeterminate value to function arguments raises undefined behavior. This assumption can be encoded in LLVM IR by adding no undef attribute to function arguments when lowering C to IR. Currently, memory sanitizer developers are doing this work because it is also useful for improving sanitizer performance. Another class of assumptions is that certain operations must return well-defined values in C and C++. For example, signed integer overflow, computing out-of-bounds pointer, and loading ill-defined values of non-character type immediately raise undefined behavior. Therefore, when lowering C to IR, it will be sound to add assumptions that addition, pointer arithmetic, and memory load with non-character type cannot return on that for poison. This is my observation, and I think this can be done by introducing bang no undef metadata and attaching it to those operations. Note that bang no undef should be stripped when an instruction is relocated to avoid the introduction of undefined behavior. Fortunately, LBM already strips metadata by default when relocating instructions, except for special cases. The second direction is to improve the existing undef and poison analysis. For example, we can do better analysis of variables in loops. To see this, let's look at the following example. You can see that there is a variable i, which is a phi node. Each value is zero in the first iteration and increments by one for each iteration. The incremented value is stored at i prime. The question is whether i prime is never on that for poison. The answer is yes, and the reason is as follows. First i prime cannot be undef because it starts from zero and increments by one. When signed overflow happens, it is poison, not undef. Second, i prime cannot be poison either because if i prime was poison, the comparison with n becomes also poison, and therefore the conditional branch on poison, poison raises undefined behavior. From this, we can conclude that i prime is never undef or poison. I think this analysis can be implemented by using scalar evolution, and also there are many other rooms for improvement. Finally, we can make more optimizations and analysis aware of freeze. Updates in Simplify CFG is important because we know a few miscompilations that require branch conditions to be frozen. Inst combine and inst simplify have a lot of patterns, but we don't need to update all of them. Fixing patterns that appear in practice might be enough to minimize its effect to compilation time. Also, currently, freeze blocks vectorization because vectorizers aren't aware of freeze and they can be updated to handle them. To support freeze in analysis, it is important to know whether the analysis is must or may because handling of freeze makes big difference between them. Here, a must analysis means that its result should hold for all possible values, whereas the result of a may analysis should hold for one of the possible values. Currently, this distinction between may and must analysis is not clearly made in LLVM, which I think needs improvement. So far, I talked about future directions for addressing performance regression issues. Among this, I tested the effectiveness of using the non undef poison assumptions from source programs. As a baseline, I fixed 16 bugs by ins either inserting freeze or conditionally enabling it when inputs are never undef or poison. This fixed 24 miscompilations that are found by Alive2 from unit tests. Next, I applied two clunk patches. The first patch is attaching no undef attributes to function arguments when lowering C to IR. As described before, I used the patch that is already written by sanitizer developers. The second patch is attaching bang no undef metadata to loads lowered from L values in C and C++ when it is valid. I compiled SpecCQ 2017 with O3 and counted the remaining freeze instructions after the optimizations are done. The first clunk patch removed 14% from all benchmarks, leaving 86% of freeze instructions. 
For each benchmark, about 49 to 95% of freeze remained, with geometric average 77%. The second patch removed 43% of freeze instructions with geometric average 551%. This shows that about a half of inserted freezes can be removed with the two patches in clan. Additionally, I inspected the remaining freezes and they were mainly due to loads that don't have bank no on them. Interestingly, many of the loads still had bank TVAR metadata. This implies that there are many optimizations that are aware of bank TVAA but not bank no on them, and bank no on them are stripped by them, whereas bank TVAA are not. I believe majority of the freeze instructions can be removed when those optimizations are updated. So this was all about fixing existing miscompilations in LLVM, but we all want to write new optimizations and assuring their correctness is important as well. In this slide, I'd like to talk about writing safe optimizations. I will introduce three short guidelines that might be helpful to you. The first one is that even if your optimization isn't about constant undev or poison generating instructions, it can still be incorrect when undev or poison inputs are given. Keep in mind that input values of an optimization can potentially be undev or poison. Second, be aware that two users of the same variable can return different values and it can make the optimization incorrect. We saw this example, the conversion from multiplication to addition, which is wrong when x is on def only. Finally, please double check that the transformation does not introduce new on def or poison. For example, when swapping the order of addition, the NSW flag should be dropped. Otherwise, it can introduce poison. It can happen when, for example, x is a negative number and y and z are large positive numbers. Finally, I'd like to conclude by discussing one more issue, which is that reasoning about undev is much harder than that of poison. This is because one just needs to consider two cases about poison, either poison or not. But for undev, there are so many cases due to partially undefined values. The complexity of undev is also empirically demonstrated. Allow to detect more than 30 miscompilations only caused by undev. This means that most miscompilations become sound in the absence of undev. Finally, I'd like to conclude by discussing one more issue, which is that reasoning about undev is much harder than that of poison. This is because one just needs to consider two cases about poison, either poison or not. But for undev, there are so many cases due to partially undefined values. The complexity of undef is also empirically demonstrated. Alive 2 detected more than 30 miscompilations only caused by undef. This means that those miscompilations become sound in the absence of undef. So I think removal of undef might also be an interesting future direction. Basically, it seems possible that a good use of poison and freeze can play the role of undev. The key question here is how to support bitfield accesses without using undev. There are a few ideas and I'm happy to discuss them with people in the LLVM community. This is the end of my talk today and here is the summary. First, LLVM has a notion of undev and poison value and there have been miscompilations with respect to undef and poison, and freeze can fix them by removing corner cases which are undef and poison. Using freeze can cause performance regression issue, but its cost has been reduced with patches and it can go better. Finally, to make things simpler, it might be better to move towards removing undef and using poison only. So this is the end of my talk and thank you for listening. Also, I thank many people who helped carry relevant patches into LLVM. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks for that great talk, Junyoung. And it's a little bit weird not to be able to um, clap and applaud, but, but I assume everybody would be if they were able to.
And now we have a very short 10 minute question and answer period. And the way we're doing this is we're going, I'm going to be taking questions, reading them off the Whova app and um, asking them to Jun Young and, and he'll respond to them. Okay. So the first question for Jun Young is replacing undef entirely by poison seems like a very valuable goal. How far away are we for making uninitialized memory poison? That is having mem to reg put poison instead of undef into feed nodes. Hi. Okay, thank you for the good question. So, well, I have to say that uh, it is currently in the, uh, still in the early stage, but a good news is that this can be done in parallel with the effort for uh, having a better support for Fritz. So what we currently need is a poison constant. So in case of undef, there is an undef constant. So it can be used as, it is currently used as a placeholder for the uninitialized value and I think by, uh, also we can similarly do this by introducing a poison constant and using it for the uninitialized value, um, <clears throat> yeah, uninitialized value holder. And and after then, now what we can do is to introduce a few optimizations on poison, for example, constant forwarding or inst combine or inst simplify or many transformations on poison. And this will be much, uh, very straightforward and simpler than adding optimization on undef because the semantics of poison is simpler. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it can it can be go in this way. Okay, thanks. The next question is, does this mean, and this I think is just the, you know, the whole, the whole context, does this mean that undef should not be used as a placeholder for a value that has not been decided yet? Yeah, that is kind of an unfortunate news. So, uh, but the poison turns out to be more undefined than undef uh, in contrast to its name. So yeah, I think um, this is also the reason why currently we need a poison constant as well. So if we have a poison constant and gradually use poison at the constant, then uh, we can resolve the issues somehow. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. How could SCEV be made, and that SCEV is the scalar uh, evolution uh, analysis. How could SCEV be made aware of freeze? Um, yeah, that is a really good question. And also it is, it was one of, it was a um, very important issue. So, um, <clears throat> so, well, my conclusion is that currently it is a bit hard for the scalar evolution to support freeze. And the reason, the main reason is that, um, the reason, the main reason is as follows. In order to make analysis support freeze instruction, we need to precisely define the semantics of the analysis with respect to undef and poison. And this is possible for simple, um, simple analysis with existing value tracking, for example, but in case of scala in evolution, it is uh, the, the size of the library is really big and also the way how the result of analysis is used is pretty complex. So, well, currently, what I um, what I am thinking of, and also I like to suggest, is to rather uh, have a transformation which basically hoists freezes inside the loop out of it. And actually, this path already exists, and this is uh, the path is called canonicalized freezing loops, and it is already run before the loop strength reduced, and it is enabled by default in the O1 pipeline. Okay. Next question is, loading indeterminate values as other than characters or bytes in C++ is undefined behavior. Is this modeled by LLVM? Um, yeah, that is also a good question. So uh, we are currently dealing with LLVM IR and actually in case of LLVM IR, we don't need to directly define is it as undefined behavior. So what I'm thinking is that um, when lowering from a source language like C or C++, we can attach an additional metadata, which is um, like bang no undef. Then now using that metadata, we can um, give additional opportunity to do more optimization or getting more assumption that the, the result of the load from um, non-character or byte type in C++ is never uninitialized. Great. Okay, the next question is kind of a big one. It says a previous paper suggested removing undef entirely in favor of freeze and poison. Is that still the goal? And if not, where did the previous paper go wrong? Oh, well, sure, that is definitely still our goal as well. But, uh, well, yeah, 
Um, actually, what I, what I'm really happy is that so uh, I after the introduction of Chris, I could um, try I could face many uh, problems that happen in practice rather than in theory. And and what what I found was that it may take some time to uh, apply some change, even if it might be simple uh, to be done in um, in the theory. So yeah, definitely, I think um, moving toward using poison and freeze only is is the solution. Yes. Okay. Can you explain how to support bit fields in an undefless world? Okay. So there are two possible solutions. The first one is using a very packed struct. So currently, uh, um, so the very packed struct type is a struct type that does not have padding bits at all. So by using this, we can load a byte with a very packed struct and then now and then pick the bit field elements only. It will uh, block the uh, spreading of the poison bits into the results. And the second possible solution is to use a load freeze instruction. So it does not exist in IR, but it is a possible suggestion. So we can freeze the memory bits and load into the results. So it does not mean that we the load freeze is going to modify the memory, but it is going to uh, temporarily freeze the bits and aggregate the bits to return a single value. Then this can be used to uh, support bit build. The, so the pros and cons of these two approaches um, exist, and I think it is a uh, valuable to discuss about this in, in today's impromptu round table meeting. Okay, the next one is another another harder one. Um, I have a more high level question. How do we automate this verification process beyond Alive 2? Many of your examples are not people optimizations. That is, that is, they're related to loop optimizations. Yeah, that is a really good question and also really good research topic. And I think Nuno will also uh, will be more um, know about the correct answer, but. Um, Currently, the, the answer that I can do is that we are trying hard to support and detect the, bo the box. So in case of the recent efforts that are made to Alive 2 is about encoding the precise semantics of um, the precise memory model. So, well, which is a bit contra contradictory because currently LLVM does not have a precise memory model, but we have uh, one that is suggested and um, made in the past and we think it quite works very well. And in case of loop, um, there are a few, usually it can be uh, addressed by unrolling the loop constant time. And yeah, currently the approach is being made. Thank you. Okay, a too big shift or a, or a shift past bit width is undefined in C and also in LLVM. How should one lower a shift from a language where it is defined as zero? I think there are two possible approaches. First one is to um, um, kind of the, use the remainder operation for the shift amount. So for example, if it is doing a eight bit shift, then we can use, we can do remainder of eight on the value and use it to shift the value. Or, okay, it's, oh, it is defined as zero then, well, maybe we can, um, um, well, we can encode the instruction, the semantics in a few instructions. But if you think it is too verbose, then maybe we can also introduce intrinsics as well. And as well, and this is also happening for a few front ends like Rust, for example, for saturating ads. Okay, um, we're just about out of time here, so I think we'll stop the Q and A here. Um, thanks again, Jun Young, and um, everyone. Thank, I'm glad you attended the keynote. Thank you.